Hello and welcome to this NCFE provider session on Formulae and Bidmas. My name is Charmaine Phelps and I'm a provider development officer here at NCFE. If you would like the slides that accompany this recording, you can email me charmainephelps at ncfe.org.uk. The objective of this session is to explore approaches to teaching bid mass and substituting into formulae. We'll take a look at the prior knowledge needed before covering this content. The order of operations will look at formulae expressed in words, then move on to substituting values into formulae. We'll look at the formulae that learners need to know for their functional skills assessments. And then we'll take a look at some assessment questions and finish with a short summary. We'll begin by considering the prior knowledge that will support your learners with the following subject content statements. At level two, the subject content statements referring to formulae and bid mass are on this slide. It's worth making links with the content in shape, space and measure as well, since these two content statements also refer to formulae. Now, in the live session, we did a Jamboard activity uh, just to assess what the attendees thought uh, the prior knowledge would be that learners would need before they can follow the order of operations and substitute into formulae. And uh, from the Jamboard, we got uh, know what operations are and how to use them. Uh, to know what the correct order of the operations is, uh, what the operations look like. Uh, they need to understand indices and the purposes of brackets. They need to know that plus and minus are the same and times and divide are the same in terms of importance. They need a base knowledge or understanding of place value and it would be useful if, if they also understand column method when working out addition, subtraction, etc. So the, those are the ideas that the attendees came up with. And from the subject content statements, I've placed here on the slide the subject content from lower levels that may need to be reviewed before beginning the content at level two. By all means, you can pause this recording to read through what I've included. Looking at sequences can be a good starting point for introducing rules and formulae, and there are some links to resources on a later slide that you may like to consider. Uh, first of all, here's an activity that you can try. Uh, it's quite good fun as a lead in to formulae, formulae. So I'm thinking of a number. I multiply by four and my answer is 20. What was my number? Okay, quite obviously, it was uh, five because five times four is 20. Uh, another one we can try is uh, doing a little bit of magic. So think of a number between one and 10. So you can do this now. Uh, obviously you can do it with your, with your learners. So think of a number between one and 10. Uh, now double that number, add six. Now halve it. Now take away the number that you started with and multiply by five. My magical prediction is that your answer is 15. How did I know? Um, so this is something that you can ask your learners. Can they work out um, how it's, uh, I'm always going to know um, what their answer is because ultimately, no matter what number you start with, um, by adding six um, after we've doubled and then halved and took away the number we started with, I'm always going to end up with an answer of uh, three here. And then because I've multiplied by five, I'm going to get 15. But it's a, it's a nice one to get your learners thinking. On this link uh, slide, I've got lots of links um, and obviously uh, I've got the shortened version. So if you would like any of these links, um, I can send those, I can send the slides over to you because there's some, some quite useful resources on this slide. All, all of them are free. 
it's I do need to state that with any of the links to third party or external resources that NCFE share with you, these are not NCFE endorsed, they're simply resources that we found helpful and our providers have found helpful. Okay, we'll look at the order of operations now. Now in the live session, again, we did this as an activity uh, just to think about when introducing learners to understanding the order of operations, what are your starting points, what resources do you use, and how might you link this with uh, learners' lives, work, vocational studies. And so from the Jamboard, we saw that attendees stated that starting with how secure learners are with each operation, so adding, subtraction, dividing, multiplying. So starting off there, uh, introducing what bid mass is and breaking it down into manageable chunks so that learners aren't too overwhelmed with the operations. And some of the resources that our attendees use are various functional skills websites, uh, BBC Bite Size, and also uh, Skills Forward, which is now the NCFE Skills Assessment Tools and BKSB. Okay, here's an idea to start off a discussion on the order of operations. Um, you may have seen these kind of social media memes. Uh, this one is a, an NCFE branded one. But um, I often come across these on Facebook and I quite enjoy taking part in them and also reading the discussions that follow when people are adamant that they are right um, when perhaps actually they're wrong. Uh, because ultimately, without a, a good knowledge of bid mass, um, and also, uh, for instance, with this one, I've been a bit cheeky and naughty. So, um, it, it's not just about following the order of operations, it's also looking at um, your observation skills. So here, these pizza slices are, you know, the pizza's cut into four. Uh, we've got each pizza cut into four is worth four. But then later on, this pizza is actually cut into eight. And that pizza actually is counted as eight. So I'm not going to tell you the answer. Uh, by all means, you can always comment below on the YouTube uh, comment section to say what you believe the answer is here. But it's quite a nice way to, to start off um, and introduce uh, bid mass in a way that your learners could well be familiar with. Now, without a specified order of operations, we've got uh, an expression here, 20 times six plus three, take two times 10 divided by two. What could be the possible answers to this expression? By all means, pause the recording, see how many different answers you can come up with if we forget bid mass. Um, and then obviously using bid mass, you can work out the correct answer. Um, and it just goes to show that we need, we need um, a, a specified order of operations because if we don't, we can just have so many different answers. We've got it worked out nicely here for you. So the actual answer is 113. The acronym BIDMAS is a great way to remember the order of operations. You might have another way, um, perhaps you can, uh, by all means, if you do have another way that works with your learners, please uh, drop me an email. Uh, we're going to try out this order with a couple of activities that you may like to try with your learners. So bid mass stands for brackets. So anything that's in brackets is done first. Indices, which is something to the power of. Um, quite often you might have, you might be familiar with bod mass instead. So orders. So um, this is to the you know to the order of to the power of three. Um, we've got the square root here. Uh, so it goes brackets, indices, then you do division, then you do multiplication, then addition, then subtraction. But as somebody stated on the Jamboard, the addition and subtraction are kind of on a, on a par with one another and the division and multiplication are also on a par with one another. Um, but it is important that you do the division first. So we've got uh, an activity. So it's, it's a true or false activity. Um, so we've got four plus 12 divided by two equals eight. Is that true or is it false? 
and I'll give you the answer now. It's false. Okay, 16 divided by 4, take 3 equals 1. Is that true or is it false? And I'll reveal the, reveal the answer. It's true. Uh, 5 plus 5 times 5 equals 50. Is that true or false? And I'll reveal the answer. It's false. So we do the multiplication first. 5 times 5 is 25 plus 5 is 30. So that one's false. 4 times 2 squared, take 4, is 0. Is that true or is it false? I'll reveal the answer. False. So we do the 2 squared first. So 2 times 2 is 4. And then we do them so we can put four there. Then we've got four times four, that's 16. 16 take away four is 12, so it's false. How about this last one? Eight times nine plus nine divided by three equals 75. Is that true or is it false? It's true. So We've got the division first, so 9 divided by 3 is 3. 8 times 9 is 72. 72 plus 3 is 75. So it's true. Another extension for this is to take a look at the ones that are false here and see if you can ask your learners, well, what, what is the correct answer then? Or you could also ask them, is there a way of adding brackets to make these? false ones true. And that leads on to the next activity, insert the brackets. So in this activity, we've got five expressions that are all the same, yet they each have different answers. Where should the brackets go to make each one true? And please pause this recording if you'd like to try this for yourself. Otherwise, I shall reveal the answers now. So for this first one, we don't need any brackets um, at all. 10 take 4, take 3, take 2 is equal to 1. For this one, if we do the 3 take 2 first, that gives us 1. So 10 take 4 is 6, take 1 is 5. Here, we've put the 4 take away 3 in brackets, so 4 take 3, we do that first, that's 1, 10 take 1 is 9, take 2 is 7. Here we've got brackets, so 4 take away 3 is 1, 1 take away 2 is minus 1, 10 take away minus 1 is the same as plus 1, so we've got 11. And for this one, uh, we do the brackets first. So minus three take away two is minus five. Minus five times four is minus 20. We've got the minus and the minus, which gives us a, a plus. So we've got 10 plus 20 equals 30. OK, we'll take a look at formulae expressed in words now. Um, so I'm going to tell you. A little true story. So um, when I grew up, I, I've actually got eight brothers and sisters. So when I grew up, there was a, a lot of washing that needed to do. And um, unlike teenagers nowadays, we didn't ever get asked to help. We just helped. Um, and I quite liked hanging the washing out. And with the, because there was a lot of washing and only a limited number of pegs and space, rather than putting one peg on either side of each item, we would always um, put one peg between two items. So you'd have one peg between the items here and here. So it's not quite as many as two pegs per item. And what I used to really like is when it came down to the smaller pieces of washing at the end um, to save me bending down and picking things up, I like to get exactly the right number of pegs in my hand um, for the number of small items that I had in my hand. And uh, I, 
I created a little formula. Um, this is the first formula I ever created. And I worked out that the number of pegs that I needed was the number of items plus one. So it's a very simple formula um, that I came up with. And that way I could pick up the right number of pegs um, for uh, the items of small um, washing that I had. Um, you know, obviously this is a very simple one-step formula, but getting learners to think about what they do on, a, on an everyday basis and how they could develop a formula in words um, for that activity can be a good starting point for understanding formulas before we sort of start to get frightened because we're, we're looking at algebra. So this was another breakout room activity uh, looking at formulae that um, the attendees could come up with would be relevant to learners' lives, work or study. And the ones that we've got um, come up here, uh, we've got, you know, coffee plus sugar plus milk equals happy, or you could look at the, the total cost, you know, C plus S plus M, uh, sky minus sun equals winter, uh, donuts times five equals dentist. Um, this one is you know, more teacher related than learner related. Ofsted times N equals N stressed. Uh, computers divided by students. Um, you can think about what the, the, the answer could be for that because it, it wasn't completed in the session. So it's, yeah, it's a nice way. It's a, it's a fun sort of way of, of yeah, fun little introduction to, to formulae um, before we get worried that we're <gasps> doing algebra. OK, we've got some examples of formulas uh, in words on this slide that learners may be familiar with. Even if your learners are starting at level two, it can be a good idea to begin with formulae in words before you go to um, formulae looking at just letters um, and values, because the formulae do make more sense when, when you're looking at words rather than just um, figures and numbers. So it can kind of remove the fear factor that some learners have when they're introduced to algebra. So you may be familiar with these um, particular formulae. OK, so now we'll look at substituting values into formulae. So substituting values into a formula simply means putting the values into the formula to remove the words so that we can evaluate. So as an example, use the following formula to calculate the time to roast a chicken that weighs 1.2 kilograms. Uh, so the formula is time to roast a chicken in minutes is 45 times the weight in kilograms plus 20. And if we substitute in the value, we get the time to roast the chicken is 45 times 1.2 plus 20. And if we remember the order of operations, so we know we've got to do the multiplication first, we get 45 times 1.2 is 54 plus 20 equals 64 minutes. Here's another one. Amy is a fitness instructor. She uses the following formula to calculate a client's body mass index. So this one is more complicated because it involves indices and also a fraction. However, we can substitute in the values and solve in exactly the same way. So Amy is a fitness instructor. She uses the following formula to calculate a client's body mass index BMI. So it's mass in kilograms divided by the height squared, height in meters squared. So she has a client who's 1.6 feet, five meters tall and weighs 70 kilograms. We need to calculate the client's BMI. So first we substitute in the values. So 70 divided by 1.65 squared. So there's uh, the first part and then we follow bid mass. So we do 70 divided by we're doing the indices first. There's no, uh, well, we have put a bracket around this. Um, but it's, it's to the power of two, so it's square. So we do 70 divided by 2.7225, and that is 25.71. Um, here we've got one we're now moving on to, formula expressed in symbol, symbols. 
is a very simple formula um, and we can solve it in the same way by substituting in the values first. So Gus is catering for a work lunch. He's ordering sandwiches. So we call that S, juice, J and crisps, C. So it's, it's, it's nice here because we're, we're not writing the full word. So it's shorter. So algebra is a good thing. He uses the following formula to calculate the total price P for the work lunch. P equals 28S plus 14J plus 14C where P is the total price in pounds, S is the price of a sandwich in pounds, J is the price of juice in pounds, and C equals the price of crisps in pounds. Calculate the total price of the lunch if the sandwiches are £1.20 each, juice is 49 pence a carton, and crisps are 32 pence a packet. So first we substitute in the values. So we've got 28 times 1.2 plus 14 times 0.49 so we've got to remember here we're um, we're converting everything into pounds we're putting everything in the same units and then 14 times 0.32 following bid maths we do our multiplications first that gives us 33.6 plus 6.86 plus 4.48 which gives us a total cost uh, total price of 44 pounds 94. Here's another one expressed in symbols. So this formula is to convert degrees Celsius into degrees Fahrenheit. So Fahrenheit equals nine fifths C plus 32. What is the temperature in Fahrenheit when it is 16 degrees Celsius? So again, we just follow the same steps. Substitute in the value. So we've got F equals 9 fifths times 16 plus 32. And then we follow bid mass. So 9 divided by 5. So when we see a fraction, we know that that's basically 9 divided by 5. If we didn't have a calculator, we might do this in a different way. But we've got a calculator. So 9 divided by 5 is 1.8. Then we've got times 16 plus 32. So that's easy. We're just writing the same bit out again. And then we do the multiplication, 1.8 times 16 and then we have 32. And our answer is 60.8 degrees, which we may well round up to 61 degrees, but the question doesn't tell us to do any rounding. So we can leave that one there. Uh, then uh, during the live session, we looked at strategies, resources used when teaching how to substitute into formulae, um, the challenges that you face and how we could overcome these. Um, there was a lot of discussion uh, mainly uh, relating to just panic, panic, sheer panic when looking at a formula. Um, potentially overcome this by relating it to a song. Um, so that's one way of doing it. Another way is you know starting off with words, starting off with words, starting off with what your learners are familiar with, um, and then showing them that by using symbols. It's just a shortcut, it's just a, a, a faster way of writing it out. Again, we've got some links on this slide and if you would like uh, our uh, the slides for this, then please do um, drop me an email and I'll send the slides over with these links. But you can, I mean, you can Google diagnostic questions, you can Google Corbett, Corbett Maths, um, you can Google the SSDD problems, you can Google Mars Maths as well and obviously uh, test the Times Educational Supplement. Okay, now we'll just look briefly at the formula to learn. And I, and I do know that there are some teachers who, who do give learners for functional skills maths a, a lot more formulae that they need to learn, which is and some of the formula that they give, they're not really formulae, they're just sort of rules that they need to learn. Um, but ultimately, these are the, the formulas um, that learners do need to know. They do need to know how to calculate the area of a rectangle, length times width, the area of a triangle, so that's a half base times height, the area of a circle, which is pi r squared, and pi is usually given as 3.14, sometimes it's given as 3.1 or 3.142, um, but that's always going to be given. The circumference of a circle, which is pi d, and the volume of a right prism, which is always the whatever the area of the base is whether that's triangular and you would use this formula um, 
uh, rectangular or circular, and then you multiply that by either the height or the length, uh, depending on whether it's standing upright or on its side. So it's, there's, there's really not very many formulae to learn for functional skills maths. Oh, and I have specifically left out the formula for um, the perimeter of a rectangle, because I've got a feeling that the reason learners get confused with area and perimeter of a rectangle is because they're used to sort of doing um, A equals 2L plus 2W. And I, I personally, I think that's confusing because the perimeter is always just adding up the edges. If your learners want to shorten that to um, 2L plus 2W, that's up to them if they understand that. But personally, I wouldn't be teaching that. I would just add up all of the edges when it comes to perimeter to avoid confusion. OK, we're going to take a look at some assessment questions now. Denise needs to wax to make candles. She wants to know how much wax in kilograms she needs to buy. She uses this calculation. How much wax will Denise need to buy? We need to follow bid mass. So first thing we need to do is look at the indices. So we've got 870 times 1.5 all over 100. It's a nice straightforward one because 10 times 10 is 100. Uh, now we need to do that division and in theory division comes before multiplication but not when it's written like that you can almost sort of put in brackets here um, so we're going to look at what is above first so we'll do 870 times 1.5 and I'm allowed a calculator so over here just so you can see what I'm doing so we've got 800 and 70 times 1.5 equals 1,305. And then divide by 100. And I'm not going to plug that into the calculator because it will actually be faster for me um, not to do that. So 1,305 divided by 100 is 13.05. And our units are kilograms. So quite straightforward. We didn't have to do any substitution there. It was simply the order of operations. Okay, this next one is another level one question. I can use a calculator again. When people are starving, aid organisations have to decide quickly who to help first. One method aid organisations use is to calculate body mass index BMI. To find the BMI, step one, calculate height times height. Step two, divide weight by your answer to step one. Height must be in metres and weight in kilo kilograms. Calculate the BMI for a person who has a weight of 64 kilograms and a height of 1.6 metres. So a, a good approach is to read this again twice or we could highlight the key information. Um, so ultimately, the key information here is we've got, we need to do this step first. Um, so do this first, and then do this bit second. So height times height, right? I've got to do some substitution here. So height times height, we've got 1.6 times 1.6. And I'm gonna use my calculator again. Uh, I'll clear what's there. Good calculator skills, make sure you clear. I've got nothing in the memory, so I don't need to worry about that. Uh, and we've got 1.6. And using my knowledge of my calculator, I mean, this one does have a squared button. Um, so I could click that, but a lot of basic calculators don't. Um, if I just click times and equals, that will actually show me 1.6 times 1.6. So we've got 2.56 there. So, and then the second thing we've got to do is divide weight by this. So weight is 64 
divided by 2.56. So using calculator skills here, I can be clever. I can store this 2.56. I'm going to click M plus. Okay. I'm going to pick C, get rid of that. And if I do 64 divided by memory recall, which is 2.56, yep, my answer is 25. And it really is important as well that your learners do understand how you don't necessarily, it's, it's nice for them if they know shortcuts like having how to use the memory function. Um, but so long as they, the most important thing to do is to always clear when you need to clear. Um, otherwise, you can pull answers through from, from a, an, a previous question and, and it will interfere with your, your working. Okay, we'll take a look at another, this one's a level one non-calculator, so we can't use a calculator here. Dennis thinks he's spending too much money on fuel for his car. He uses this formula, it's nicely written out in words here, so that's not too scary, to work out how much fuel in litres he uses in a year. Oh gosh, we've got a conversion here, we've got the used in litres, we've got miles per gallon there. Last year he travelled 10,000 miles, so that's that part. So I'm going to actually draw um, a little arrow so that I know what I'm doing there. That would be harder for me to do in an on-screen assessment, but I can do it on paper. So that bit is going to go into this box. His car did 40 miles per gallon. So this bit is going to go in this box. How many litres of fuel did Dennis use last, last year? So that's, this is what we want to find out. So we've got uh, the fuel equals distance travelled is 10,000. times 4.5 divided by miles per gallon is 40. Okay, now in truth, you know, bid mass would tell us strictly that we have to do that 4.5 divided by 40 first. That's quite tricky to do. So it is actually useful for your learners to have a bit of an understanding of when you can kind of break the rules slightly because um, it will, I will get the same answer if I do the multiplication first and you can practice some, some questions just to, so that your learners can see when that does uh, hold stand true. But because I don't have a calculator, it's gonna be easier for me to do the 4.5 times 10,000 first. So I've got 4.5 and basically we've got uh, So it'll be four, five, zero, zero, zero. Okay. Divided by 40. Um, dividing by 40, I do not know my 40 times table. So I can divide this by 10 and divide this by 10 and calculate 4,500 divided by four. That's far easier to do. Um, I can write it out. in a standard way, fours into four go one, uh, fours into five go one, remainder one, fours into 10 go two, remainder two, fours into 20 go five. So the fuel, how many liters of fuel did he use? He used 1,125 liters. And just to illustrate this, just because if you like, I, I did it in the wrong order there, didn't I? Um, I'll just show you that it does give me the same answer. So what we should have done is 4.5 divided by 40 first. I didn't do that because it would have been tricky. Okay, gives me this 0 0.1125 times 10,000 equals exactly the same answer, okay? So I can check this um, with a calculator, um, not in a real live assessment, but um, 
having an, uh, a good understanding of, of, of the, yes, you must know the order of operations, but yes, you must also know when for ease, um, for the non-calculator paper, um, when you can do things just slightly the, a different way. So times and divide, yeah, you can sometimes do those a different way. Addition and subtraction, yes, you can sometimes do those in a different order, but you cannot do a multiplication and a subtraction in a different order or a multiplication and a, and a, and a addition. So that's why somebody in the earlier Jamboard suggested that uh, addition and, and subtraction are kind of the same. Um, they're on the same level and multiplication and division are again on the same level. We're going to look at a level two calculator question now. Chen reads about some footprints that were preserved in volcanic ash. The foot length was 18.8 centimetres and the stride length, so the foot length was that, and the stride length was 164.5 centimetres. Archaeologists use this formula. Okay. Chen uses a calculator to calculate R for the footprints found in the volcanic ash. She enters uh, stride length divided by four times 18.8 and gets this answer. What has Chen done wrong? Ah, so this question, I'm, I don't actually need to do the calculation here. I just need to, to state what Chen has done wrong. So it's, it's that thing of, we had this earlier, isn't it? So ultimately, when you've got a, a fraction like this, you need to treat what's on the bottom as being in brackets. You have to do that first. She hasn't done it. She's done um, stride length divided by four and then multiplied by foot length, and that's given her a very much higher answer. So um, ultimately, what has Chen done? I don't need to write that necessarily uh, here, but I'm, I'm going to verbalize it. What has Chen done wrong? She has not followed the order of operations. Um, I don't necessarily need to show the correct answer. Um, any answer from, from this particular question that involves the order of operations would be acceptable. So I can say what she should have done. She should have done four times the foot length first and divided the stride length by that. But I don't actually need to do the calculation for this question. Okay. We'll take a look at one more uh, calculator question uh, for level two. Some drivers driving over the speed limit are invited to go to a speed awareness course instead of getting penalty points. There is a maximum speed at which a person can drive and be invited to a speed awareness course. The speed is given by this formula. M equals 1.1 L plus nine, where M is the speed in miles per hour and L is the speed limit. Calculate M when L is 30 miles per hour. So this is very straightforward. I just need to substitute into the formula. So we've got M equals uh, 1.1 times 30 plus nine. Uh, so 1.1 times 30, I can get my calculator out again. And I can do 1.1 times 30 equals 33 plus 9 equals 42. Okay. In summary, uh, so we, we asked for the key takeaway from the session. We, we got, uh, you know, looking at concept through song, uh, simplifying putting it, giving a context so that learners understand it um, better. So uh, you can have a little think about what you've got from uh, this recording. But in summary, try to relate the formula to your learners' interests, their work or vocational studies. Ensure that bid mass is understood and followed, but also make sure your learners understand how they can sometimes do little shortcuts like in the example that we did previously to make a, a non-calculator um, question easier. Start off with formulae in words. Um, that can help with understanding. Introduce formulae with symbols as a shortcut, okay? Solve formulae with a step-by-step -step approach. Just always follow the same approach 
uh, substituting the values and everything will be fine. So we've got, um, if you're interested in further training, we have our um, functional skills events page here where we have CPD webinars, there's onboarding, uh, this on demand takes you to the YouTube playlist. We've got drop-in clinics. There's a, a webinar coming up for essential maths in English and everyday life. We also have a best practice network. And if you'd like to be involved with that, you can register your interest there and then we'll send you out further information. Your key contacts are on this slide, myself and Patricia for maths and English, and then Rachel for ICT and essential digital skills. And you can also contact uh, the account management team uh, or customer support for anything related to the portal or um, surpass. Thank you so much for your time. I do hope you enjoyed this session. And uh, from everybody at NCFE, please continue to say, stay safe and take care. Thank you.